Leland Vitterit also in Washington, D.C. as part of our team covering the president's speech. Good morning to you, Leland. Yeah, Adrian, good morning. Can we focus on the fact that this was a particularly heavy lift uh, for the president, considering uh, the topics that he had to touch on? Was the resolve that the U.S. will stand with Ukraine a rare moment of unity at the Capitol? Well, it's certainly rare for a president to start a State of the Union, which is typically a domestic speech, heavy on foreign policy. Uh, maybe a heavy lift for the speechwriters at the White House to craft those top 10 minutes uh, in the past couple of days, but it provided the president a really unique opportunity. This is a president who showed up at the Capitol as the most unpopular Democratic president since Jimmy Carter, with very, very little in the way of wins to talk about and very little in the way of domestic policy to put forward that he knew was going to get passed or had a good chance of getting passed. So these first 10 minutes heavy on Ukraine was an opportunity for President Biden to highlight what has been widely considered the best three weeks of his presidency here. So the question going forward is, how does President Biden capitalize on that? And there's a lot of questions in Washington of why there wasn't more time spent on Ukraine, more time spent highlighting foreign policy and how President Biden was going to leverage so far bringing the world together on Ukraine and less time on the reinvention of Build Back Better, which has now been called Build Back Sort Of, and the other domestic policy issues that he's going to head to Wisconsin to talk about. Put another way, President Biden heads to Wisconsin today in a very, very, not in, in I should say, in not a different way than he would have had he not had the first 10 minutes on Ukraine. But he obviously had to balance what's going on in another country with the domestic concerns here and Main Street America's concerns. Because while there are a lot of people who care about what's going on in Ukraine, they also care about their families, they care about education, they care about this vaccine uh, era that we're in, uh, the pandemic easing. Uh, did you think that he spent enough time, or are we hearing that people believe he spent enough time on domestic issues? Sure, he spent 50 of the 60 minutes on the domestic issues. Uh, the big issue that the president faces, 80% uh, of Americans say they're Mo they're worried about it. 55% of Americans say it's the number one issue facing America is inflation, rising costs. And that's something that the president may want to change, but inflation and economic timelines do not match political timelines. And that's difficult for the president. The one thing that was the same between the president's speech and the Republican response uh, after the State of the Union was personal stories about how the president or the the governor of Iowa, in the case of the Republicans, had dealt with inflation themselves. There's this idea that Joe Biden is out of touch with Americans. He was the one who said inflation was transitory. This was a chance for President Biden to say, I feel your pain. I understand what America is going through and why you feel uneasy. You mentioned that the governor, uh, Kim Reynolds from Iowa, her response, the Republican response, a resounding message, not just something that Democrat or rather Republicans uh, would uh, be in tune with. But I think a lot of Democrats would be as well, as there are a lot of people who want to feel like life is a little more normal. Uh, are we gaining uh, some ground in terms of the fact that more people are unifying around this idea that we as a country can have a uh, choice and that we as a country can move forward and that we as a country are getting out of this pandemic? Sure. It's why you saw everyone at the State of the Union yesterday without masks. The White House realizes that masks and this visual reminder of a perpetual pandemic is no longer politically popular. It's no longer signaling we're taking science seriously. It's signaling that we're shutting down schools. It signals that we're having kids in masks, which is wildly unpopular among suburban mothers that put Joe Biden into office, although it's still popular with the teachers unions. So it's you pointed out well about Kim Reynolds sort of unifying message, if you will. And she spoke about the issues that Republicans view as their all time winners. Why do they say that schools and parental empowerment in schools and keeping kids in school and not masking kids in school and students? parents say at school boards is important? Well, Republicans know they won Virginia, a blue state, a Joe Biden plus 10 state by three points with Governor Glenn Youngkin on the issues of schools. Republicans are going to ride that horse all the way to the midterms if they can. Leland, thank you so much. I know you've been working hard uh, for us all evening and into this morning. You can catch On Balance with Leland Vittert every weeknight on News Nation. It starts at 7 Eastern, 6 o'clock Central Time.
Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.